Alrighty. Hello, hello. Welcome. And thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Resolution Revolution Summit. I, of course, am your host, Lauren Sanchez, board certified holistic health practitioner and women's health specialist. I am so excited to introduce those of you who are maybe not be aware of our guests. If you're not aware of her, I'm super excited for you to learn from her today. Um, today, I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Sarah Banta, and she is the well, I'll start here. She's a celebrated health coach. In addition to that, she is the owner of Accelerated Health Products and the host of Accelerated Health Radio and TV, which reaches hundreds of thousands of listeners a month. And she really helps clients and listeners reach their optimal state of health through proper frequency enhanced detox supplements, cutting edge technologies and modalities. And I'm actually just going to stop there with telling you a little bit about Sarah, but you're going to know right off the bat that she is just such a wealth of knowledge and she has such a great heart from what I've had the chance to experience of her so far. So thank you so much for being here with us today, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Lauren. I'm so excited to be here and have this chat. Yes, so needed, so needed. So let's kind of kick things off. Like I said, I wanted to talk or hear you tell a little bit about your story and how you kind of got into all of this. You know, it's funny. I was actually talking to my mentor yesterday and we were talking about where the business is and he's the one that got me out of my deep, dark hole that a lot of your listeners probably have experienced or are experiencing. We all have to have that crisis moment or um, the rock bottom to then spur us up, right? It's like a boomerang. And when I, um, gosh, you know, when I was growing up, I always knew that my stomach was sensitive. I couldn't eat everything my, my family was eating and I was weird. I was the picky eater. Um, but then you have the girl issues that as you're getting through going through high school and college. But then, um, when I was pregnant, it was like, you know, you're, body's going to do anything to save that baby and sacrifice you. And my health just went downhill. Um, after the pregnancy, I just felt like I would eat and the food would just sit there for hours. It wasn't digesting. I'd be bloated. I had acne and I wasn't a teenager anymore. My hair was falling out. I had PCOS. No doctor told me what to do about the PCOS. Um, they just said, here's some fertility drugs when you're ready to get pregnant again. And it fast forward to when um, I, I started peeling my health like an onion with my practitioner, the Western medicine did not do me any good. Now, that's not to say there's not a place for Western medicine, um, right? I was in a car accident, I needed stitches, thank goodness, I could go and get some stitches. But I have a story about that too. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so we're starting to peel the onion, I had leaky gut, my food was literally turning to food poison, and rotting in my stomach, I the PCOS were, was from insulin resistance, who knew, no mm -hmm. one tells you that, right? Um, everyone says fat is bad. So if you're not eating fat, you're eating carbs and, and protein. So your insulin and your your blood sugar is going to go up. That's what I was was happening. Um, but I had no energy. So as I was peeling this onion for my own health, piecing me back together, uh, my kids were growing. My eldest, my son was nine years old, and he was diagnosed with leukemia. So that's when my life stopped. Be, but I looked at him in the eyes and I was crying and he goes, Mom, why are you crying? You're going to fix me. And it was at that moment that I said, you're right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I, I never give up on anything ever, ever, ever with my, that's just my personality. And so I said, you're right. So we started talking about food changes. Now, back then I didn't know what I know now, but this kid grew up on microwavable corn dogs. That's the level of nutrition I knew when I was first a mom. So fast forward to when he was nine, I knew sugar was bad. Um, protein was good. And that's as much as I kind of knew at that time. And so we put him on the accelerated silver, which is my number one selling product um, and started to just see things unfold within one year. 
I knew that he was feeling better because he was no longer tired. He was acting like a typical boy that should. And um, we got the, the blood scan again, where we put the blood underneath the microscope. And the lady who is very, very blunt, the first time I went, she goes, he's got leukemia, do something now, or we're going to have a really sad next couple of years. The next time she said, I've never seen a nine-year-old boy's blood so beautiful. She said, not only are the cancer cells gone, but the blood is nutritionally dense and it's round and there's no, no acidity. And she was teaching me about what blood should look like and what it looks like without cancer, but maybe it's anemic or lacking the vitamins in there. So that was miraculous. And then what happened then also is we would then do a sip of the silver and re redo the blood and the blood would just be moving and moving and moving and just like this happy blood. Now, legally, I'm not allowed to show those videos anymore, but they are, it's amazing, like instantaneous of what it was doing. And so that was when I said, okay, I've got something here because my friends were putting their kids on antibiotics and steroids at the age of two for a sniffle. That's way back before COVID and all this other stuff going on. And I thought, you know, we have to change this. And so I started my business just out of my house, one case of silver at a time, selling bottles to friends and family, finally put up a website and um, started started adding new supplements. I was not thinking I was going to be a working mom. I always thought I was going to be a stay-at-home mom, but this took over, and my passion for health just goes, goes, goes. Fast forward to the fact that that nine-year-old boy is now a 20-year-old at, at college in Utah and studying business, he has not been sick since he was nine. No one in our family has been sick or on antibiotics in 11 years. All five of us have tested positive for COVID at some point, multiple times, no symptoms. And we the only reason we knew is because we had to test for some reason. And that boy is now skiing and studying, doing well in school. He'll mountain bike ride and ski in the same day sometimes just because he's he's super crazy. Um, and then my two girls, you know, they didn't have leukemia, but my middle child, she was the kid that I couldn't peel off of the, the couch. She was so tired, so anemic. If someone got sick and it lasted for two days, she, it would last for three, three weeks with her. And every October I, I feared and I hated the month of October because that in Southern California is where you get those nights that are a little cooler or the weather might not, it's turning from summer to uh, fall and she would get sick. Mm -hmm. It was like, it wasn't even around other people. She would just get sick every single year. Um, I could not get her to do athletics at that age. Um, that girl is now recruited to row for USC. Wow. And I don't know if anyone has ever rowed or gotten on a rowing machine, but it is probably the toughest, most um, aerobic and strength at the same time endurance sport. And um, she's, she's doing amazing. And um, my youngest daughter, she is, she had the healthiest I, I should say she was not, um, she had the least amount of vaccinations and she just tended to be the healthiest child. But in first and second grade, we were seeing some issues with um, reading and her ability to retain the information. And it wasn't quite ADHD, but we couldn't quite figure it out. Her reading was going backwards. Then, then there was some anxiety that ensued all of these things. Um, my point in saying that is that girl is in high school in honors English, getting, you know, straight A's, doing exceptionally well. And it's not without work. It's not without the right diets, without the right supplements. 
Um, so I'll just stop there, but that's, that's a little bit, bit about my family background and where we are today. And it's a journey. It's not over. Yes. And you know, there's a couple reasons why I kind of wanted you to go over and share your before and after in terms of your story here. Um, it's one because of what you just ended on is it is a journey. So hearing you say I was the mom who started out feeding my kids microwavable corn dogs, right? And to progress to where you are now and see that the, you know, your your efforts have proven themselves in such tangible ways for your kiddos. Um, and so I think that's amazing. And I'm, I'm sure I'm going to ask you a couple more stories or, or a couple more questions about a few more stories because I've heard you tell some other ones too that I think are just super valuable for people. <laughs> um, but let's kind of dive in, kind of piggybacking off of the whole microwavable corn dog situation. Um, yeah. And you talked a little bit of also about, you know, in your own story, the, the gut health situation and things of that nature. So I feel like where we are now, um, in terms of like the education, the information that's out there in the world, most people know processed food equals bad, but we don't really have a clear picture of really what's kind of going on underneath the surface. And I think yeah. bridging that gap for people helps us or gives us even a little bit more encouragement um, and reason to avoid certain things. Um, even if it may not be convenient or we don't necessarily like the taste of it initially. And I always try to say initially because your tastes change as you change and you improve your health. Um, but go ahead and just kind of give us an overview and um, we can tie it to gut health specifically. But why are processed foods so bad for us, Sarah, especially with our gut? Okay, so I want to I want to get back to that. But I was just listening to something about coffee and I want everyone to think to themselves that first sip of coffee before you knew the experience of caffeine, mm -hmm. it is, it doesn't taste good. It's mm -hmm. bitter, but you learn to love it because of that awesome feeling it gives you and the energy, right? So think about that when I'm talking about changing your taste buds and for food. Now, processed foods, number one, they're inflammatory. So your joints are going to hurt your, your, um, it's going to inflame your brain. You're going to, it's going to cause brain fog. It's going to cause vision blurriness. But what, when I was eating those processed foods, I would mix in the healthy foods thinking, oh, well, it's kind of a zero sum game. It's not doing damage, but it's not giving me nutrients mm -hmm. wrong. What it's doing, it's causing leaky gut, which then makes it so that when you eat that awesome wild animal protein that I talk about, your body can't absorb the nutrients from it. Mm -hmm. But then this is where the, the big companies get you is it is, it is taking off the villi in the, um, in the gut that produces the hormones, but that also have the signaling of a hormone called CCK. When you eat wild animal protein, bison, um, uh, grass-fed beef, wild salmon, um, deer, elk, all of those nutrient-dense, awesome foods, they go down into your gut and your gut says, oh, oh my gosh, I'm going to tell my brain that I'm getting all of this great nutrients. I'm not that hungry. I'm going to stop eating at this amount and my, my appetite suppressed mm -hmm. and I feel great. My blood sugar is great. I'm not craving anything. So that hormone CCK is only triggered by amino acids from protein and omega-3 fatty acids. When you are eating processed foods, the, they wipe out the ability for the gut to send that signal in addition to adding hidden sugars in, and even hidden fake sugars into the gut that you can, can't even taste. Some of them you can't even taste in your mouth, but your gut can taste them or he sees them. And it actually tells you to eat more, eat more, eat more. So it's not just one thing, but there, it's almost like this domino effect. And then when you're eating those processed foods, I actually, the vegetable oils like canola oil and um, peanut oil, grapeseed oil, those oils are worse for you than sugar. Sugar is in and out of your body within a day, right? Those vegetable oils stay into your body for over a year. 
And so you have to be really careful when you go to restaurants now, even fancy restaurants with olive oil, they cut their olive oil with canola oil and you don't even know it until you may have an allergic reaction or you feel swollen. You can't take your rings off your fingers because you're, you're retaining a whole bunch of water. So that's another thing. So the seed oils are really important to stay away from. And I don't know if you've uh, read my blog this week, but it was all about amyloid proteins. And this is an issue um, that has gotten uh, more important than ever to learn. So amyloid proteins, you hear the word amyloid plaque with Alzheimer's. Now, I just found out that I have both genes to have Alzheimer's. So for, for me, there's no choice. Right. I cannot eat those amyloids. So amyloids get deposited in the brain and the kidneys and your organs. And but what else they they are um, is that they can't be broken down. So the way the body takes protein in, they it goes into the liver, the liver breaks it down into amino acids. And then your body says, oh, I need this amino, this amino, this amino all put together and I'm going to package it and send it to my bicep muscle or wherever it needs to go. So with the amyloids, they don't get broken down. So they're not usable. And not only are they not usable, but then they get deposited and cause damage in the body. So what we've been finding in the last two years is that the spike protein whether you're vaccinated or not, because it's been vaccine shedding from having COVID um, or, or from the vaccine, is that it's tripping up and causing more amyloids to be created in the body. Then what else happens is those amyloids in the gut will cause gut pathogens like salmonella and E. coli to rear their ugly heads. We all have a, a Salmonella and E. coli and H. pylori. We're supposed to have thousands and millions of viruses in our body, but we just want the good guys to outweigh the bad guys, right? So what happens is those amyloids trip up the gut pathogens, cause a leaky gut, and then cause those bad bacteria to then wreak havoc. And the amyloids are in chicken, all chicken, dirty bird, stay away from it. I'd rather you have a vegan meal than eat chicken. I can't say that enough. Turkey is not as bad, um, but it still has the amyloids. Pork, pork is dirty. Pigs don't sweat, right? So where are their toxins? Their toxins are in their body, right? Um, and conventional beef. So those are the ones that you really want to stay away from. Grass-fed, grass-finished beef, it should be fine. I love bison and lamb. Those are my favorite. And they're super easy and accessible to get nowadays. Um, you can just Google the, the farmers that they ship directly. And it's really not any more expensive than going to the market. And it shows up and it's in your freezer. So I don't have to decide what I'm having for dinner until an hour before. So it, all, it also is, is a much, much easier. But um, with, the, with the standard American diet, you have one thing added onto another and then all of these artificial sweeteners, which are tripping up your pathways um, and causing you to be more, um, more hungry, the appetite increases. So, so even if it's a no calorie sweetener, even stevia, stevia can back up the liver. So then you're not able to process the meats and the proteins and the fats the way the liver's supposed to. Um, but it's, it's telling your body, I just had something sweet. So now I'm expecting calories to go with that sweet, mm -hmm. but I didn't get the calories. So what am I going to do? I'm, I'm having an insulin response, which brings down your blood sugar. But what then happens is then your body's saying, I need to raise my blood sugar because I'm going to, I'm feeling really low right now. So then it makes you want to eat more. So that's something else that, that people don't realize when they're having their Big Mac with their Diet Coke. Um, right. So I'll stop there and let you ask some more questions. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you touched on a lot of different things. So first things first, I, Anytime I have these conversations with people who've gone through, you know, a big change and transition in their lives, I always want to remind people listening, remember, 
it's steps. It is a journey like we started off with. And so I don't want anyone leaving this episode thinking, oh my goodness, I can't eat chicken anymore. I can't da 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 I have to be a breathitarian. No, 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 no. Listen to what we're saying here. So what I would like to kind of bring us back to Sarah is one, let's actually talk about detoxing from that sad standard American diet. So for someone who, you know, they have this new year resolution because that's where we all are right now. (laughs) That's what the point of this, this whole event is. And I know people, when they get to the new year resolution, especially if we have weight loss as a goal and we're still tied into the diet dogma. (laughs) What are people grabbing for? Oh, chicken and veggies or chicken, veggies and a rice or what have you. So I would love for you to kind of talk to people through that process of transition. So where would they start? And not only the mindset shift, but actual practical steps here. And I want to emphasize what you said. I not only was microwaving corn dogs, I was microwaving my breast milk. So if anyone can turn things around, I am the most humble person when it comes to my past and and the damage that I've done to my children. (laughs) Um, But there's always a way to reverse it. And I, this has been a journey for me for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So do you need to change everything tomorrow? No. So I've created my group coaching um, surrounding uh, some supplements that make things easy. And so number one, everyone's wanting weight loss and more than ever, because the hormones have been tripped up from our environmental toxins and what you could do before isn't working anymore for that weight loss. So we do need to detox on a gentle way on a daily basis. So my accelerated de- detox powder is an easy step. You do a little sp- spoonful or a teaspoon, to, one teaspoon to tablespoon in your water at night before bed. And it's going to help soak up the toxins from the day, help with the inflammation in the gut, help with constipation and, and diarrhea, um, balancing your, your doshas, as they call it in Ayurvedic medicine. Um, and, and that will help with the detox the acceleridine iodine. So what this Sorry, is, Sarah, I don't want to cut you off, but let's go back. Tell me a little bit more about the detox powder. So like what's okay. involved in that? What is, yeah. What, what's in it? It is, it is five, uh, six different uh, combination of six different organic ingredients, MAGO seven activated charcoal, triphala, um, gosh, a zeolite. And what it's doing is it's helping soak up the GMOs, the heavy metals, the radiations, the pesticides, the poisons. You know, my son has it at college because it helps soak up alcohol. Um, <laughs> and I, a lot of college kids love it for that reason. Not that I am promoting alcohol. Right. <laughs> because I, there's a lot of damage done to the body. Um, but so it soaks all the toxins up. What happens when people do detoxes is they'll start cleansing and you introduce all these toxins back into the blood and you feel awful. And then you quit within a day or two, you have headaches, you have no energy. Mm-hmm. So the detox powder soaks up all those toxins and then it'll carry it out through the colon instead of burdening your liver and your kidneys. Mm-hmm. Now we want to cleanse our liver. Not everybody jumping in right now is going to go for my liver flush. I understand. So what we want to do is do it gently. And so with the supplements, the silver, the iodine, the acceleridine, and the accelerated keto, that's going to give you energy while detoxing. Mm -hmm. And when you're, so I'll go through these real quick. I mentioned the silver with my son. The silver is going to devitalize and um, help kill all viruses, bacteria, fungus, and and, uh, candida. What is so special about the accelerated silver, it is enhanced with scalar frequencies, and we put in frequencies to combat COVID, monkeypox, and the current threats. Mm -hmm. So that is what's so crazy is um, no other silver out there does it and it's a combination of colloidal and nano silver but the oh, particles yes yeah. so the particle size is so small you very you don't need as much as other um supplement or other silvers to be as effective so then you have the accelerated iodine 
It also kills all viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasites. You can even use it on your skin for um, acne breakouts or wound healing. It helps with apoptosis. Apoptosis is the um, destruction of diseased and cancerous cells. What else is great that what, what we're seeing is it is it has a negative charge and negatively uh, it's a scalar charge to it as well. It neutralizes the inherent positive magnetic charge of all the toxins, including the graphene oxide, spike proteins, aluminum, and radiation. It is the only iodine that feeds all 100 trillion cells in your body. Most other iodines have 10 to 20 percent absorption. This has a hundred percent. And most other iodines, your body has to break apart from another molecule to actually get used. And it's not just about the thyroid. It's about the breast tissue and preventing breast cancer and all cancers, but also opening the pineal gland. So what's this going to do when you, when you're like, I'm going to do it this time, I'm going to lose weight, new year, let's get it going. When you start taking the iodine, the energy just, you feel it in your body, but it opens up the pineal gland that has been calcified with heavy metals over the years. So it opens that up, starts detoxing it and you're awake. And you feel the brain fog lift and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like a new human. I'm, I'm going to go clean out my closet. I've got um, these toxic people in my life I need to get rid of. All of these things start happening. Well, you that what's happening is it's increasing the ATP production at the cellular level. That's your cellular energy. That's not the energy for the, from the caffeine or the monster drink, but down into the cells by 18 times. So not 18%, 18 times. Mm -hmm. Then you add in the accelerated keto. The accelerated keto is flipping, flipping you into fat burning within 30 minutes. So why is that important? When your body is using the ketones from accelerated keto, it's set and then tapping into your own fat stores for energy. You're like, I'm not hungry. I've got plenty of fuel on my body to burn. I don't need to eat to get my fuel. Mm -hmm. And so what else is also is happening is glucose is inflammatory in the brain and all the tissues. So when you're not eating the, the inflammatory glucose or sugar, every the inflammation goes down in the brain and in the body. So the joints stop hurting, the brain fog goes away, and you're able to actually start regenerating new stem cells throughout the body. Autophagy happens. Autophagy is the recycling of um, recycling of other cell parts in the body and the cleanup. I kind of think of it as like Pac-Man going through your body and cleaning <laughs> everything up. Um, but where accelerated keto is different than any other keto supplement is it has additional ingredients that break down the saturated fats into unsaturated fats. Why is this important now more than ever is that COVID has made it so that people are having a hard time breaking down fat and protein. So these unsaturated fats are easier for the body to utilize and convert into those ketones. And then so with that, the accelerated keto is actually defatting your liver. So even without the big liver flush that I really want you to do eventually, <laughs> um, the accelerated keto is going to start burning that liver flat, fat, the visceral fat, targeting that, that fat, but at the same time, maintaining your muscle mass. It has HMB in there to prevent muscle wasting. Most people, when they lose weight, they lose muscle and fat. So we're wanting to protect that expensive muscle and lose just the body fat. It also, the, the liver is where that thyroid hormone T4 converts into the active T3. T3 is your metabolism, right? So a lot of people are on thyroid medication and it's only T4, it's going to do no good if, you're, if your liver is all backed up and you can't convert the T4 to T3. And you're not going to be able to lose weight without a metabolism. Mm -hmm. So the accelerated keto starts doing that. Now, 
accelerated thyroid is here and already just a week in Lauren the feedback has been phenomenal it helps clean out the liver or I'm sorry clean out the thyroid support the thyroid um, and boost the metabolism so you actually can lose weight and feel good so these supplements are going to make it so that all of your efforts actually work. And then when you see progress, you will keep going instead of giving up. Mm -hmm. Now the accelerated thyroid is hopefully going to help a lot of people get off their thyroid medication. Um, it also is enhanced with scalar frequencies to help establish a healthier thyroid in general, but then also to neutralize heavy metals and radiation that like to clog the thyroid. And that is what is slowing down the thyroid. We are being bombarded by technologies, EMFs, our Zooms, our cell phones, our 5G. That is scrambling our brain and clogging our thyroid. So what happens is then you're not able to lose weight. You lower your caloric intake, your metabolism slows down more, and then you can't lose weight again. You lower it again, and it's this vicious cycle. I'm actually seeing people able to eat double what they used to be able to eat when you're eating that wild animal protein that increases the metabolism on its own intermittent fasting and use using these supplements. Now, I talk a lot about the importance, importance of electrolytes because a lot of people think that energy comes from food. Energy comes from hydration, but not just water. It comes from salts and the minerals and the electrolytes. And that's why we came up with the Accelerated Ancient Salt, which is over 62 minerals it tastes phenomenal. You don't need any other seasoning when you're eating your food. But when you're nauseous or you're low energy, just putting a little on your tongue or in your water when you're working out, your, your energy goes through the roof. Because remember, we're in ketosis. We're on the accelerated keto. And we have thousands of calories on our body to burn. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to reach for that fuel. And also, the blood is going to our extremities because our blood is not needed in our digestive system when we're in intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will see, I mean, I just had a lady um, text me saying, I'm so dizzy. It's almost like I have vertigo. I don't know what's going on. And I said, well, what supplements do you have there? And she said, I've got the keto and the silver and the salt and the iodine. I said, put the salt on your tongue. And I'll then take a, a drink of water with some more salt in it. She goes, oh my gosh, I'm totally fine now. You know, most people are walking around dehydrated. Mm. They drink enough water or they're drinking their Diet Coke or their coffee. And that's not hydrating the cells. We need to hydrate at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I love that. And I love that you said what you said about hydration and energy. We actually have Dr. Dana Cohen, who's the author of a book called Quench. Um, and she talks all about proper off, or proper uh, hydration. So I'm so excited that you kind of piggybacked off of that as well, too. So again, you said so much. So I'm going to take us a little bit back. So if someone's listening and the they're like, oh my goodness, what is this scalar frequency situation that Sarah just mentioned? So tell us about scalar frequency. <laughs> So I want to explain it like for you moms out there when you got an ultrasound, right? That's frequency medicine. That is frequency healing. Music is frequency. You walk into a room and it's heavy metal and you get a headache or it's peaceful Beethoven and you feel very calm. Those are frequencies. I've got a frequency device on here that is connected to my phone called the Genius Insight app and it's frequency. It, it measures my voice. Um, and tells me what's going on. If I've got my hormones out of balance, if I have COVID, actually, it's told me that if when I was, the reason I bring that up is you can actually memorize frequencies, scalar frequencies in water and in supplements. Um, so scalar technology is from Nikola Tesla. And essentially, it har it can neutralize or um, it's almost like a puzzle that goes this way and turns it with like a virus pattern or a or a, um, a, a, a candida pattern or whatever and goes in and then cancels it out. Mm -hmm. So 
I hope that makes sense. It's a, it's more complicated. And on my website, I go through the, the science of, of um, scalar frequencies, but you've got all of these frequency devices that are that are um, based off of frequency healing. And so what we've done is we've put them into our supplements and pretty much all of the accelerated supplements have frequencies for healing, like the accelerated gold. Gold is known for increasing IQ, for calming the mind, for anxiety. So we put in further frequencies to help with sleep and anxiety. For the accelerated thyroid, I explained for the silver, we do the the frequencies of the current viruses, but also boosting the thymus health. Um, and then soon is the Cognoblast brain pill that's coming, a nootropic. Super excited about that, but we'll also add in some frequencies to that as well. That's amazing. I don't know why, but hearing you kind of explain this brought up to me the uh, modality of homeopathy a little bit. Is there any yeah. connection there? Yes. So in the sense where homeopathy, if you take something and your body doesn't need it, it's not going to hurt you, right? So if I if I give you uh, the silver with the frequency to fight COVID, but you don't have COVID, it's not going to give you COVID or swing the pendulum into the wrong way. Um, it's just neutral. So mm -hmm. you get the benefit of all of what your body needs. Mm -hmm. um, it's really interesting when you do like these frequency scans um, and that is available to all of you. If you want a free two week trial with the Genius Insight app and a one-on-one -on -one consultation on reading your own scan, that is mind blowing because it will come up with things that no one else knows except for you. Um, and it can even come up with like emotional stuff. So it's really a great way to learn about how the frequencies work. Amazing. Okay. So let's hop back on what we were talking about a little bit earlier with kind of crafting our nutrition for ourselves. And I'll open up the conversation to the DNA diet and kind of creating, because again, I feel like this is another thing that just needs to be said, no diet. <laughs> or way of eating is suitable for everyone. So talk to us a little bit about the importance of the DNA diet. Um, and then we'll tie that a little bit more into um, the supplements and creating a protocol for oneself based on that. Yeah. So most people, they're big four de defenders or issues that most people have oxalates, which are berries and spinach, almonds, oxalates can wreak havoc in the body. And they're these foods that you think are healthy. Well, if you have the gene that can't clear them, then it's going to back up your liver. Okay. So sulfur, sulfur is the second group. Sulfur's in egg yolks and onions, garlic, cauliflower, broccoli, bok choy, cabbage. Everyone's going, wait a second. I hear those are super good for detoxification. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you have an, an open sulfur detoxification pathway, otherwise they're going to back up your liver. Mm -hmm. And as your liver gets backed up, what falls apart? Your metabolism, literally your everything. Your everything. liver does so much. In your right. <laughs> right. So if you need to know if you're doing a low carb ketogenic diet and you're filled with all these cruciferous vegetables, you're going to get fat. And it's not about calories. It's about hormones and detox. Um, and then the proteins. And I talked about the amyloids and sticking to the wild animal protein. Um, and then the fourth is fat. Some people just have a hard time breaking down fat. And that's going to be um, a liver issue too. If you're nauseous after eating some fat, that means that you need a liver flush or you need some liver support and to, to take off the burden. You can do a vegan diet wrong and right. You can do a keto diet wrong and right. You can do a paleo diet wrong and right. I would say every single practitioner or nutritionist agrees that you got to get rid of the the seed oils the processed foods and the sugars and if you're sticking to whole food i'd much rather you have whole a whole potato um versus doing keto with packaged foods yeah. right so with the dna diet once you start healing the gut, because all of those things I just talked about, the oxalates, the sulfur, the amyloids, and, and the bad fats can cause leaky gut. If leaky gut is happening, then nothing's going to work. 
your estrogen dominance symptoms are going to go up, your hormones are going to go down, brain fog, anxiety, depression, bloat, constipation, all of those things. So when you can heal your gut with the supplements I mentioned before, intermittent fasting, but then you could also add in the leaky gut bundle, which is some supplements that help heal the gut much quicker um, and in a different way than it's not a typical probiotic, but a more spore biotic and spore biotics actually have brains where they get down in there and they go, they look around and go, okay, I need more of that. I need more of that. And so they're much more smart as far as healing the gut. And then you can start possibly eating some of those other foods again. Um, once you cleanse the liver, you might be able to introduce those foods again. I could not, I could not have a bite of broccoli before. If I have it at a restaurant, totally fine. Um, if you're viral, if you've been exposed to the flu or COVID, you may not be able to have egg whites because egg whites trip up the viruses in the body. So these are little things that people don't really recognize when you're thinking egg whites. Well, there's no calories to them. It's pure protein. It's good for everybody. Maybe not. Maybe it's good for you in a month when your immune system's strong, but not right now. So that I go into a lot of that in my coaching to teach you how to take that power back and to really be your, your own doctor um, and be become very intuitive. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like the just the world that we live in today, that's an absolute requirement. We just have to understand these things. Um, and if nothing less, we get to be connected with someone like yourself um, who knows what they're doing and can kind of guide us on, on the path to success here. And another thing I want to point out that you said is a lot of these things aren't forever things. Of course, we want to keep the processed packaged food out. We want to keep these artificial junk, this artificial junk out. Um, but again, like you were mentioning, sometimes we just need to go through a healing protocol and people might be hearing, oh my goodness, I can never eat egg whites again. No, that's not what we're saying here. <laughs> we just got to get your body to a place of optimization so that you can, and your body is equipped to be able to digest these certain things, process these certain things, and you're able to absorb the wonderful foods that you're eating. So love it. Okay. So now tell us a little bit more about, so actually I'm going to back us up again. So talk, talk to us a little bit more about like the wild protein. What are the good ones to go to? What are the proteins to kind of stay away from? So I would say focus on the bison, lamb, deer, elk, game, uh, Cornish game hen, duck, uh, pheasant. You know, there's a lot of chicken-like birds out there that you can <laughs> eat instead of chicken. Um, and wild fish, Arctic char. It's a awesome fish that a lot of people don't know about. Trout um, and wild salmon and staying away from chicken as much as you can um, and and conventional beef. Those are the two worst. If you're going to get beef, get it grass fed, grass finished. That's the most important. Um, and they taste good. The meats I'm talking about taste really good. So you are not deprived. Yes, I just made a um, like a venison hash the other day. My husband loved it. It was so good. I'm going to have some more of that for dinner today. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's talk more about the, I know you have all of the different, there are a lot of different uh, kind of constitutions, a lot of different um, plays on DNA under under your roof personally. So talk to me a little bit about, because this is another thing that I know people can relate to, the, the picky eaters in the family or the people who may not be on the same journey as you are and what have you and trying to tend to all of those. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your personal experience with, you know, kind of um, getting everyone the nutrition that they need in your household with everyone being very different. So we don't really eat much sulfur or oxalates in the house. Um, and I focus on that protein. So as the cook, I'm making sure that the protein tastes good, right? So I want everyone to want the protein. Salads are usually very mild, meaning romaine lettuce, um, bib lettuce, butter lettuce, you just want to stay away from kale and spinach, mostly. Um, asparagus, most people can eat. Um, artichokes are good for everybody. Um, you know, tomatoes and butternut squash, uh, spaghetti squash, those are, are foods that are good for everybody. I don't eat as many carbs as my daughters do because they're athletes. So they'll make some, um, you know, uh, gosh, 
either some some quinoa protein um, pasta to go with their food or some brown rice. So, you know, everyone is um, pretty much on the same page as far as what we all can eat. There's this this base of what we can all eat. And then everyone else kind of goes off and and chooses the other things that they want to add in. Do you tend toward a um, like a system for this? I'm big on helping people like dial in their systems. I think it's a fabulous way to help us be consistent with things. Um, But do you tend toward any type of system in terms of like meal prepping certain things or having certain things already prepared in some capacity in the house? I do extra food at dinner so that there's leftovers the next day for a quick um, quick meals and when the and when the kids are just uh, coming in for a quick snack or ready to grab something, I'd rather them not grab a protein bar because typically they're full of stuff that I don't really want them to eat. Um, they're not bad, but I'd rather them to stick to the whole food. Um, so typically I pull out my meat from my freezer in the morning and I'll marinate it or do whatever, put it away. And I am a busy busy lady. <laughs> I've got, you know, my my kids and then I've got my business and everything. So cooking is not going to take more than 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, whether it's, you know, just throwing something on the barbecue, broiling it in the oven, um, and maybe cooking a vegetable on the top of the stove. It's not complicated. I don't, I don't ever want people to be scared that they can't do, do healthy eating because they don't know how to cook. Absolutely. Yes. That's huge. Um, Okay. Amazing. So talk to me a little bit more about, I know one of your big things is and a huge goal for a lot of people is reverse aging. So talk to me a little bit about that with, you know, dietary modalities, and as well as um, we can talk a little bit more about supplements as well. So everything I just went through, the, the Ascent Diet Cleanse is my most popular cleanse, and that is going to start reversing aging with the Acceleridine boosting the ATP, with the Accelerated Keto boosting the ATP, and boosting your immune system with the silver, soaking up those toxins, getting them out of the body with the detox powder, but then we add in the liver flush. And all the liver flush is, is some extra... Um, pills that you take for two weeks while you're eating, you're not starving, you're eating everything that we've just talked about. And then on the last day, you actually take this olive oil citrus fruit drink, and you lay on your right side, you've taken quite a lot of magnesium, and then you're going to flush stones, liver stones and gallstones into the toilet. And when you do that, your liver's like, brand new and it can can um increase that metabolism increase the fat burning increasing um the digestion or the breakdown of the enzymes so that is the base of it so we're stopping the aging and we're 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 just sitting there right with with the autophagy that's occurring the apoptosis killing the disease cells but then you can add in the stem cell activation patches and they're the x39 patch is the main patch and what it does is it reverses uh, or it resets over 4000 genes in your body to a younger state increases collagen increases that apoptosis um, happening in the body and essentially your body's acting as if it's your 20 year old self your skin's better your hair's better um, then you add in the x49 patch that's going to increase muscle muscle um, building fat burning hair growth turning the hair back to the original color, um, helping with skin and just energy at the gym, vitality, libido, all of those amazing things. I have to tell you, I've got two sisters, one uh, four years younger, one that is older. They are both gray. I have two gray hairs and it is, I, I swear it's because of all of these things I'm doing with, um, there's a glutathione patch glutathione is the master antioxidant and detoxifier boosts your immune system but the patch this is interesting glutathione is a sulfur-based supplement so when you're taking the the supplement you're taking sulfur in it might back up your liver the glutathione patch actually tricks 
to, has your body produce its own glutathione and it's increased by 300% in 24 hours. Um, so that is really important. And glutathione has been shown to be connected with um, longevity as well. And then you've got My Vital C. This is a supplement that so stops the cytokine storm um, from COVID, but it also has been shown to double lifespan, help with hair and skin. And it's one of my favorite supplements as well. Wow. Okay. I want to ask you this too. I didn't plan on asking you this, um, but especially with, you know, you have your sisters who are around you and, you know, yourself and everything that you're doing. It's kind of an off the cuff question here, but do you have any clients or family member or anything like that? who are on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy as well? And have you seen any changes um, or any improvements, amplifications with people doing that and doing with what you're talking about with the supplements? I don't know specifically about people. I can tell you I've got people on them and not on them and everyone benefits from what I'm talking about menopause and um, the hormone, the hot flashes and those symptoms start going away. I'm actually writing an article on menopause and how to minimize the symptoms. So everything that we're just talking about helps with those symptoms and helps with your hormonal balance. Amazing. Ah, oh, this is so good. This has been so good. So informative. Um, and again, I don't want people walking away feeling like, oh my goodness, my head is spinning. Um, take the little tiny steps that we've been talking about here, just switching the protein and making sure you're staying hydrated with clean water. And, um, you know, take a look at some of the supplements that Sarah just mentioned, even if you can't get everything. And actually, I want to ask you this question. If they can't get everything, what's one that you would say you should absolutely start with this one? Iodine, the acceleridine. Everybody needs the acceleridine. And to, to piggyback off on what she just said, if you're listening overwhelmed, email me through the website, your health issues, your health goals, and I'm happy to put together a protocol for you. All of my newsletters, all of my articles and protocols are in order of priority. So I assume that people have very different budgets. Some people want to get everything and some people can get one. So they're always in order of um, importance. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you for that. Okay. So now I know this is going to be a really hot gift here. So tell listeners a little bit about the gift that you have for them. You all are welcome to join my group coaching on Telegram. I post daily. I answer your questions. It's troubleshooting with, with a like-minded group of people that are on the same track you are. And everyone's at a different place, but everyone loves each other. And they're so supportive. And I answer questions all throughout the day, seven days a week. Amazing. So for those of you listening, you can hop into that group um, by using the link that you received in the email notifying you of today's episode and or on the page that you're watching our interview on. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Resolution Revolution Summit, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.